Glutathione is a tripeptide and is composed of the amino acids cysteine, glycine, and glutamic acid. Found in surprisingly high levels, 5 millimolar concentrations in most cells. This is the same concentration in cells as glucose, potassium, and cholesterol. Considering the high level of metabolic activity required to produce glutathione, such a high level underlines its importance. This information comes from a journal article published in 2014 in the National Library of Medicine, which I will link in the description below in case you want to read it yourself. Glutathione is considered the most important low molecular weight antioxidant synthesized in the cells and is often referred to as the master antioxidant. According to Dr. Joseph Pizzorno, chairman of the board of the Institute of Functional Medicine, glutathione plays a critical role in detoxification, mitochondrial function, and healthy aging. It also helps to protect us from oxidative stress, the harmful effects of alcohol, organic pollutants, and even mercury and other toxic metals. He says that perhaps the best indicator of the importance of glutathione is that its cellular and mitochondrial levels directly are highly associated with health and longevity. The critical roles of glutathione include direct chemical neutralization of singlet oxygen, hydroxy radicals, and superoxide radicals. It's a cofactor for several antioxidant enzymes, regeneration of vitamin C and E, neutralization of free radicals produced by phase one liver metabolism of chemical toxins. It plays an important role in approximately seven liver phase two reactions, which temporarily bind activated substances produced by phase one to make them water soluble for excretion by the kidneys. Transportation of mercury and other toxic metals out of the cells and the brain. Regulation of cellular proliferation. This means the increase of cell numbers resulting from cell division. And apoptosis, the process of programmed cell death used to rid the body of cells that have been damaged beyond repair. And it is vital to mitochondrial function and maintenance of mitochondrial DNA. Now your body produces glutathione. And as mentioned earlier, it exists in, comparatively speaking, very high levels in the cells. As we age, and starting around our mid 40s, our body starts to produce less and less glutathione. Exposure to stress, toxins, infections, sugar, and chemicals can cause oxidative stress and damage in our cells, proteins, and DNA. Less glutathione production means those things potentially become more and more dangerous and more harmful as we get older. Glutathione depletion has been strongly associated with the diseases and loss of function with aging. A representative study of community dwelling elderly found that higher glutathione levels were associated with higher levels of physical health, fewer illnesses, and higher levels of self-rated health. As might be expected then, glutathione status has been found to parallel telomerase activity, an important indicator of lifespan. So telomerase activity has to do with the preservation of telomere length in your DNA, which is an indicator of longevity. This depletion of glutathione also shows up as progressive loss of mitochondrial function due to accumulation of damage to mitochondrial DNA. The ability of animal species to protect their mitochondrial DNA is directly proportional to longevity. So glutathione levels go down, telomerase activity goes down, mitochondrial function goes down, and longevity is adversely affected. You could say longevity goes down. Diseases associated with the depletion of glutathione include neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and Huntington's diseases, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and Friedrich's ataxia, pulmonary disease such as COPD, asthma, and acute respiratory distress syndrome, immune diseases such as HIV and autoimmune disease, cardiovascular diseases including hypertension, myocardial infarction, cholesterol oxidation, chronic age-related diseases like cataracts, macular degeneration, hearing impairment, and glaucoma, liver disease, cystic fibrosis, and the aging process itself. As you can imagine, many researchers have been looking for ways to increase glutathione levels. And the good news is there are multiple options. For starters, Evidence suggests that eating a whole foods based diet consisting of lean protein sources, cruciferous vegetables, polyphenol rich fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices, and omega 3 fatty acid rich foods 
such as fish, can be helpful. Dr. Brizorno suggests that the very first thing we should do is to decrease the need for glutathione in the first place, which means decreasing toxic load. He says that the most obvious thing to do would be to limit alcohol consumption. He also recommends decreasing exposure to POPs, or POPs, which is an acronym for persistent organic pollutants, the primary source of which are conventionally grown foods. So, it's another reason to consider eating organic or pasture-raised foods. He also suggests that we provide other antioxidants to decrease oxidative stress. He suggests alpha-lipoic acid supplementation, commonly known as ALA, which has been shown to increase mitochondrial glutathione levels. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. Thank you. Dr. Perzerno goes on to say the obvious strategy is to directly administer glutathione, which can be done orally, topically, intravenously, intranasally, meaning through the nose, or inhaled in nebulized form. He says that glutathione administered intravenously inhaled and ingested intranasally increases systemic levels of glutathione. This means that the glutathione levels throughout your entire body go up. The IV glutathione has a short half-life, but has been shown to, at least in short term, to have short-term efficacy for several diseases. So receiving glutathione through an IV is temporary and it doesn't last, but is helpful for specific situations in multiple diseases. By now you might be wondering, well, what about taking glutathione, a glutathione supplement directly? Here's what Dr. Prezorno says about that. Oral administration is controversial. While research shows that oral glutathione does not increase red blood cell glutathione, there are a few studies that show efficacy. He says, my opinion is that unmodified oral glutathione is unlikely to consistently elevate cellular levels. Oral and transdermal liposomal glutathione show promise, but research is early. So he's saying that he doesn't believe that taking an oral glutathione supplement is very effective, and that a liposomal glutathione supplement may be effective, but more research is needed. Now keep in mind, this is an article published back in 2014. So let's fast forward a few years. Newer research suggests that taking glutathione directly does work. It's just not very effective. Glutathione supplements are unstable and are relatively large molecules, so not very much of it actually gets into your system. And once again, a liposomal version of glutathione could solve that problem, but more research is needed. Newer research also suggests that while taking glutathione directly does work, it may not be the best approach. We used to believe that all oxidants in the body were bad and they needed to be, we needed to get rid of them. But now we know that we actually need a very delicate balance of both antioxidants and oxidants. A study in the Journal of Gerontology published in 2022 took a look at supplementing glycine and N-acetylcysteine, or GlyNAC, in older adults for improving glutathione deficiency. The study says it is critically essential to understand that each tissue maintains a different amount of glutathione based on its metabolic demands. This demand is dynamic and variable. This means that each cell needs a different amount of glutathione and that amount is constantly changing. Now your body has the ability to regulate how much glutathione is synthesized and when. So if we bypass that mechanism and we just jam our cells full of glutathione, we can actually cause something called reductive stress, which can actually accelerate aging. That same study pointed out that cells require minute amounts of reactive oxygen species for cellular signaling and function. Excessive decrease of reactive oxygen species results in cellular damage, a phenomenon known as reductive stress. Cells have to maintain a delicate balance between lowering oxidative stress and simultaneously avoiding reductive stress. This balance could be upset easily. If taking glutathione directly could possibly upset that balance, what are the other options do we have? Let's stop right there for a minute. As we talk about this, please keep in mind that there are different reasons a doctor may administer glutathione for specific situations. This video is not intended to take the place of the advice of a qualified healthcare professional, nor does it constitute medical advice. The goal is to examine what a regular person like me can do to increase declining glutathione levels and hopefully slow down the aging process. Now remember when we said at the very beginning of this video that glutathione is a tripeptide and it's composed of the amino acid 
includes cysteine, glycine, and glutamic acid. It turns out that providing those amino acids, specifically glycine and cysteine, in supplement form can be an effective way of elevating glutathione levels without upsetting that delicate balance we talked about earlier. Going back to our study in the Journal of Gerontology, they say Glynac supplementation is an ideal physiological supplement that acts by supporting the intrinsic cellular capacity for lowering oxidative stress without inducing reductive stress. So Glynac supplementation can help us increase levels of glutathione without upsetting that important balance. Remember, Glynac is glycine and NAC, or N-acetylcysteine, together. Later in that same study, they say that Glynac supplementation begins to improve age-associated declines within two weeks. But longer duration of supplementation is needed for a greater magnitude of improvement. So things start getting better relatively quickly, but you need to keep doing it to see a better result. They go on to say, this randomized controlled trial provides proof of concept that Glynac supplementation represents a novel, simple, safe, and effective nutritional approach in humans to promote and improve healthy aging. If you're interested in learning more about Glynac, you can check out this video right over here.